everyone. Happy Stitch Mania. I hope your plans are all coming together and you are getting a lot of stitching in this last week. This is the first week of Stitch Mania. My plans have kind of been a little all over the place. Um, I knew from the get-go I was never going to start 31 new projects in 31 days. That is completely overwhelming for me. But I did have a plan to start at least half a dozen. So I've been working on doing this, putting together this big old project bag um, with things I have ready to go. And from this, I'm going to be choosing some new ones as the days go on. Um, I'll go ahead and show you some of the ones I have in mind. I'm not guaranteeing you I am starting all of these because... Um, I've been kind of off and on able to stitch, not able to stitch, and so I can only do so much. But I'm going to show you, first of all, um, where I'm at on the first one I've been stitching for Stitch Mania. I actually started this a couple weeks before Stitch Mania, but then I had a couple reasons why I wasn't able to work on it. So the first day of Stitch Mania, I started working on my Columbian Nymphalid again, and I am absolutely loving her. Her colors are fantastic. So I now have everything done in that wing, except for the black outlining, which is going to really make it pop. Um, I'm thinking I'm just going to go ahead and, and start up the turquoise on this side as well, and just get all the turquoise done, and then I'll add the black in um, the very last thing before the beads. But I think she's turning out so pretty. I love those colors. This is like the 995, 996, 3755 family. So pretty. And it's it's just coming together so nicely. That's what I've been working on the first couple days of Stitch Mania. Um, I actually didn't get any stitching done at all yesterday. Because um, I've only had so much energy for doing this type stuff. And I really needed to work on making some new scissor fobs. I just got some supplies in and so I was able to work on that last night instead of stitching. And I'm going to show you some new scissor fobs that I'm going to be adding to my Etsy shop soon. But um, I do have a bit of uh, a challenge I've been dealing with lately. Um, this last couple weeks has been pretty rough. I've had a, a pretty intense flare up of some health issues. And so I've been having mobility and some dexterity issues. Um, the week before Stitch Mania started, I had been kidding up some things and I woke up one day and I couldn't really use my right hand. My whole right arm was really, really weak. I would go to lift something up and I'd hold it and my arm would just drop down and I couldn't write and so I was thinking, great, I can't stitch when I can't write and I, I couldn't do any of that for a little while. So um, I was happy when about two days before May hit, I started being able to um, use my hand again some. So I'm happy to be working on some stitching again, and I'm happy that I'm going to be able to participate at all. But it's been pretty, pretty wild the last couple weeks. I haven't been able to do much of anything. I haven't left the house. Uh, if you've noticed, my videos on my channel have been pretty well, non-existent this last week. I tried posting a little uh, alert or a little comment to all of my followers saying that the next week or two I wouldn't be able to do videos much. I don't know if I did that right because I never heard any responses. I never got any comments back about that. So I may need to look into how to um, post little updates just with text on YouTube. Um, need to ask some questions and find out how to do that properly because I might not have done it right. But um, I wasn't able to do any videos this last week. So hopefully things will turn around now and I'll be able to, to get back in my flow again. Um, I am going to be changing though. I'm just going to give you this little warning here. Um, I'm going to be switching up and not doing a cooking video every single week because I'm finding that um, sometimes that's a challenge for me to get that all put together and get it online. So I'm going to do that as often as I can, but it may be every other week at this point. Since I don't want my channel to mainly be focused on food, although that is definitely a focus that I want to have. So anyway, I'm going to get back to Stitch Mania talk now um, and show you a couple more ideas of some things I'm going to start. 
and I just realized I did not bring my bag of charts in the room. But you know what? I am not going to grab it right now. Um, no, I am here and I'm staying here. So I'm just going to do what I normally do if I don't have a chart handy. I'm just going to insert a little picture for you to see the pattern I'm talking about. I can't believe I forgot my patterns. So this one, actually, I don't have this pattern yet. It's coming. I'm going to be stitching um, Nora Corbett's Miss Ladybug. And I decided to grab another one of these uh, petite point in the gray fabric because I absolutely love love the look of it that I'm working on right now. So I'm going to be stitching um, Miss Ladybug on another piece of that. And I have her DMC colors, um, but with the pattern is also coming the three beads that are required for her. So that's one pattern, uh, one project I have. Another project and I showed you this one last uh, last update video. I'm going to be doing Poison Ivy by Nora Corbett. And this is on the um, vintage Stormy Night Lugana. Um, and I've got all the floss in there and the beads um, should be coming for her as well. Then I have on this, okay, I can't just put this in a bag and show you this one. i got to pull this fabric out. If you have seen Passion Ricamo's, um, one of the more recent releases, the name is Fairy Guide. Which I absolutely love, the Fairy Guide. She is so pretty. I got this piece of fabric and it belongs to her. So I'm going to be stitching um, Fairy Guide by Passio Nercamo on this gorgeous piece of fabric. And this is Crystal Da Vinci from uh, Picture This Plus. And it is a 32 count Opal Lugana. And I think the purple and the goldy, um, not goldy, the coppery colors are going to really pull out her colors nicely. And these are her thread colors here. And I think I'm missing one or two DMCs. That's what my note is for. Yes, I am missing 747. So, but that one is, that one I'm really excited to stitch, to stitch on. And then I have a new Haid that I have finally got all kitted up, except for one DMC color. Are you kidding me? It calls for 90. I have all but one of them for my Fay Kitty or my Kitty Fay. I can't recall which one it is, but this is the picture. I absolutely love this cross stitch picture from Hade. I have been really hesitant to start a new Hade, but this one, every time I see it, I just get so excited. I think it's adorable. I have all of the floss um, purchased and gathered, but my Joann's does not have 150 and has not had 150 for at least like five or six months. Every time I go in there, I'm looking for it. They never have it in stock. So other than DMC 150, I am fully kitted up for this one. I'm going to be stitching it on some plain 18 count white Ada and uh, have that piece also. I do usually buy my Ada pieces from Joann's because um, they have such good coupons sometimes. I got this piece um, for this paid 60% off so it was just over $2 for this piece of fabric and I'm super excited about that one. I might start that one next. I'm not sure. And then I also just kitted this one up and I wish I had the picture in my hand to show you but I'm just going to insert it again. Um, Soda's Romeo and Juliet. I got the fabric and the floss for that and I'm going to be stitching it on a 25 count eight up, not eight up, 25 count opalescent Lugana because this is the fabric I have been stitching all of my sodas on so far has been an opal Lugana and so I'm going to be doing that one. That one is super fun. I also have 
the fabric and floss for um, Nora Corbett's Pixie Snapdragon. I'm going to be doing that on this little piece of hand dyed, <clears throat> excuse me, this little piece of hand dyed fabric that my, um, my friend dyed at one point. I got a big piece of this and this is the little piece I had left over and it's the perfect size for Snapdragon. And I think the colors are going to be phenomenal on that and I'm feeling a little clumsy right now, sorry. I think the colors of floss are going to be really, really beautiful on that. And if you have not guessed it, I love purples and teals and fuchsia colors. Those are just colors I, I really love for my decorating. Another one that I have is I finally got the floss and the fabric for um, Core Ibatacor, if that's the name. I've never heard Core Ibatacor, um, the craft room. I, uh, I am always amazed by how big these pictures look, but how little floss is called for in them. So yeah, I think that one's really cute. It's not quite my typical style, but I really, um, I really enjoy the theme of it. I'm also have kitted up my um, Eiffel Quaker. Now I have my have my working copy here, but I'm trying to remember the artist name on this one. I think, is it Jardin Privé? Yes, it is. It's the Jardin Privé Eiffel Quaker, which means it is um, a very, very Paris theme. It's got Eiffel Towers on it. And I'm going to be stitching this on 32 count silvery Mumugana. This is just a very, very light gray. And I have chosen my own palette of colors. It called for three different colors and they were like browns and rust and stuff. And I decided I wanted to do it in a purple palette. So I've gone with 3835, 3836, 3834 because I love that color family. And I'll just show you real quick because I only have my working copy with me right here. This is the, the top part of it. So you've got Eiffel Tower and birds and stuff like that. So that's what that is for. And then I also, oh, I bought the floss for something and I don't have the piece of fabric for it yet. And then I showed you this one before that I'm going to be doing the Tralala um, Parisian girl on um, another piece of Silvery Moon because this is one of my favorite colors of uh, Lugana. And she's very small and petite and cute and on um, the picture. And then this is one I found quite a while back. Uh, no, I've got two more. I'm going to be doing the Jardin Privy Cat Lovers, and I'm doing this on a, pay, on a piece of light oatmeal um, 18 count Ada. Because I liked the color of it, and I'm doing my own color conversion of it. And yes, these are all my project bags or Ziploc bags. Because I bought fabric to make project bags. I have a pile of fabric for project bags and I've not had the chance to, to uh, sew up any of them yet. So my project bags right now are just my clear Ziploc pl plastic bags and that works. Um, this is the last one I'm going to show you, although I have a couple more I could start, but this is the last one I have in here today, is um, I don't remember where I got this pattern. It's a digital pattern and I don't remember because I've had it a while. I don't remember the name of the designer. All I remember is that the name of the pattern is called Aroma of Travel. And it is so Narnia-esque. I had to get it. And so I have all the floss for it. I love it. I got this piece of white Lugana because I, 
this one doesn't need a background on it really so this is what I plan to do I don't know how many of these I'm gonna get started I was thinking I wanted to start a half a dozen because that way instead of having 31 projects with just one day of stitching which may only for me be like 20 stitches once I get started I would rather be able to start a new project and have four or five days to work on it and actually get like some some stability to a project like this one this one actually you can see there's something going on here I'd rather do six projects and have five days of working on each one than do 31 projects and only one day to work on each one barely even touching it so you know I was nervous about calling it Stitchamania when uh, I'm not really participating in it to the fullest extent, but I have read several places. You can do your own version of it. You don't have to do the strict exact method that it was originally designed to be. You can do whatever you're comfortable with. And right now, definitely more comfortable with starting maybe six projects, six projects, maybe eight projects, um, than starting up so many because I just don't need more than than what I can handle. I don't need to overwhelm myself. And so this is, how many projects did I show you? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm probably not starting all of those. But I'm showing you some things I'm going to be starting fairly soon here. And I'm excited about so many of them. I wish I had more progress to show you. Um, but like I said, I, some of that, some of that dexterity stuff just really throws me for a loop, and it, it really kind of dictates to me what I can do and what I can't do. I didn't even cook dinner tonight, you guys. I just said, you know what? There's hot dogs in the fridge. Grab a hot dog. I, I said I'm not up for cooking tonight, so I'm just gonna go do a video, and. So that's why I'm here. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a good Stitch Mania time. And I hope um, hope that this can be inspiring to someone. It is so annoying. Is it not to any one of you to have like a full kit, everything done, but you're missing one color? I know you can get most of the project done except for that one color. But it still, it still irks me when I'm not completely, completely there all together. So that's what I've got. And I'm, I'm so excited about these things, too. I, I do not fully kit up projects unless it's something I'm really excited about. And I don't want to start a project unless it's something I'm excited about. Because I know it'll just languish in the corner. Just sit there, become another UFO. And I don't want UFOs. I hate UFOs. I have about three or four UFOs. And they just kind of, they're always nagging at me. Um, and I hate having that. So I want to make sure it's something I really, really love before I get my hopes into it. And so some of these I've had for a while, and finally they're working out. So it's got me more excited than, than usual. I've never really participated in Stitchmania before, not with showing um, piles of starts or updating every day. But I, I really wanted to get involved with it a bit more this, this time around. And I'm seeing so many people posting their videos for Stitch Mania, and so many people just, okay, day one, day two, day three, and uh, I, I'm just thrilled that I've been able to get anything done on this. Like I said, after those rough couple weeks, not even able to really use my hand, I'm super excited I've even been able to get anything done, so um, really happy about that. These next couple weeks, I'm going to try to get uh, my video back up and get some more videos um, regularly posted again. And I'm, um, like I said before, I really want to find out how I can update you guys with little texts and little uh, um, just word statements updates instead of having to post a video every time I want you guys to get a message from me. So if you guys know about how to do that, I know I've seen several uh, people that I'm subscribed to, they'll just post, do you guys know what I mean? They just post little statement messages on the feed to where you can read it. Oh, I meant to say Happy Easter, forgot to do that kind of a thing. Um, I don't know that I'm doing it right, and I'd really like to find out how to do that. I don't know if, if um, 
if it's required that you're a more prominent videoer than that or than I am to be able to do that. I don't know. If any of you have pointers on how I can get um, well, messages across without having to point or post a straight up video, um, please share because I'd like to know how to do that. And I'd love to be able to, you know, outside of Instagram, I can post on Instagram, but not everyone who watches my videos watches my Instagram also. So it would be kind of nice if I could post in a couple different places if I have an update or if I need to alert someone to something. That would be really cool. So if you know, please let me know. Pass it on. And thank you so much for stopping by today. I know I'm not sharing a terribly long video, but um, I, I, I thought as long as I showed you what I had planned or some of my ideas that that might inspire some of you. And it might actually help me get more inspired too because now that you know what I'm thinking. You're going to be watching what I'm doing, and then I feel like, um, okay, I've got more I've got to get going on. So hopefully, hopefully Stish Mania is going good for all of you. Um, thank you so much for stopping by the cafe today, and I will see you next time. Until then, I'm going to keep working on my um, Colombian Nymphalid probably tonight, and then I'm probably going to start a new project tomorrow. And... Um, I've got a whole bag full of things to decide between, so that's going to be fun. Uh, hope to see you again soon. Thanks so much for visiting me. Until next time, ciao for now.